everybody, and welcome to the Remembering Akron podcast. I'm your host, Derek Maxfield, and uh, today my guest is Ken Kasparek. Welcome, Ken. Welcome. So your story starts in 1951, during the Cold War. You were born in 1951. That's correct. Were you born in a hospital or were you born at home? I was born in a hospital in Batavia. And who were your parents? And um, we had uh, John Kasprick was my uh, father and Janet was my mother. And uh, they grew up in Akron all their life. Both of them? How did they meet? I don't know how they met, but... They they were large. They came from large families, and brothers married sisters. I see. So it was. Um, he served in uh, World War Two, and uh, did he go abroad? He did. Um, not sure exactly where. Uh, he didn't talk about it much, but I know he was in the Philippines. Oh and, my! And uh, he spent some time there. Mm-hmm. And. My mother was a factory worker. She worked at Curtis Wright in Buffalo. Okay. And she was like the Rosie the Riveter. Nice. At the uh, plant where they made the planes to uh, take them over and help with the war effort. Right. Do you know anything about your family tree on either side? Not very much. Um, My one grandparent was from England. The other grandparent was from Poland, and uh, how they got here and their history is, don't really know. All right. I know that Grandpa worked in the coal mines Mm -hmm. um, for for I don't know how long. Wow, yeah. So you grew up in the Akron area. You went to the Akron school? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Do you have any wonderful memories from high school, A, a prom or a homecoming or a sweetheart? No, never went to prom. Um, in seventh grade, I met a girl who turned out to be my wife uh, oh, later. That's nice. So it was a long life the relationship there. That's a nice. That's really nice. Going back to seventh grade. Yep, seventh wow. grade. All right. And, and that's Marilyn. And that's Marilyn. Who you eventually married right. in 73. 73, 1973. All right. And you graduated from Akron School in in 1969. In 1969. And she graduated in 1970. All right, right after you then. Right after me. And you went straight to work. I went straight to work right after um, no college Mm -hmm. then. It wasn't until 10 years later that uh, I got the college bug and went back. Did you? Tell me about that. Went to school. And, uh, oh, well, I... I'd get up in the morning, work at four o'clock, go drive um, a ten wheeler till about noon. Then I'd go to work until noon, until five o'clock, and then at five o'clock I'd get my books and, and go to school and come home at eleven or twelve o'clock at wow, nine. Wow, that's rough. Where did and, you go to school? Uh, work in that. I went to uh, Houghton College. Okay, good school. And it was a Buffalo campus at the time. They had it uh, there, and. Uh, what was your went, major? Went three nights a week. Uh, my major um, was psychology and religion. Really? And uh, studying to be a pastor. Really? And we, um, we went for a while there. And then in 1981, I started school in 77, um, 76, 77, somewhere in there. And I went to school there until in 1981. My wife got the bug to start a newspaper. She worked for another newspaper, and that newspaper moved their office, um, worked for the Clarence B. They had an office in Clarence, and they moved their office. And... uh, We were complaining one time to uh, uh, legislator Bill Paxton at the time that there was so much news in Akron and there wasn't enough pages in the Clarence B to get all her news in. So Bill Paxton sent her a book on how to start a newspaper. Really? So in 1981, we started a newspaper. We were about May 
of 1981. And I says, okay, you uh, you go talk to the attorneys. I've got a good job. I'm going to school. You talk to uh, you talk to the attorney. See what you have to do to get a, a newspaper started because I have no idea. I came home from work that day, and she says, well, I talked to the attorney. We drew up the papers. We have a newspaper, and we're going to start publishing a newspaper. I says, oh, uh, when are we going to do this? She says, July 1st. <laughs> um, I, this July 1st? And she says, yes, this July 1st. It only made sense because Akron did not have a newspaper for the previous 15 years. The paper that started back, and I don't know how long it was in existence, they started on July 1st. So we thought it was only fitting that we would start our newspaper on July 1st. All right. And so you took the plunge. We took the plunge, and what are we going to call it? Well, your mother thinks because you played the bugle all your life, we should call it the Akron Bugle because there are newspapers yeah. called the Bugle. Um, there's a famous one uh, that was the Bugle. So I says, okay, do what you have to do. Figure out who's going to print it. So we printed at a local uh, printer. They were printing what was called the swap sheet then. Mm -hmm. So we talked to them, and they would print us a paper. And so that was the beginning of the story of our newspaper. With a very small staff, with just a, the two of you. With a staff of, uh, at that time, there was a staff of five. Oh, all right. And her sister uh, helped type up the newspaper because back then we did not have this $25,000 compiographic machine we did not purchase one because that technology, although it was a good technology, it was going out. So we waited, and she had to, at school, and, and all her college papers, she used to type for everybody and made money on the side typing papers for people. So she had a good Smith Corona, and it had a corrections feature on it, and uh, it was good. So, But we didn't want to have columns in the paper that were ragged. We wanted it to be justified. So between her sisters and my mother, they typed up a column and of uh, so many 23 characters wide. And then they would sit with that typed up copy and they would put little marks as to whether they should take out a half a space or put in a half a space or put in a space so that we would have a justified column because if we were having a newspaper, we wanted a justified column. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we justified it. <laughs> the f following year, we bought a computer we bought an Apple computer because they were supposed to be the best. Mm -hmm. And I always tell this story that the salesperson, we asked them if it would have enough memory. Well, this computer, brand new, had 28K memory. That, and the salesperson said, and that's all the memory you will ever need. <laughs> now, Anybody laughs at that because nowadays you, your files are bigger than 28K. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we started the paper on. Wow. Then we ran it, we printed it off on an uh, electronic printer that had a daisy wheel so we could change our font. Oh. And you just change the daisy wheel. And you could change your font. The computer would justify the columns. Nice. So now we were typing in, proofing it, and it would print out our columns for us. Then we would take our column in a straight edge and a knife and cut the columns, and we would turn them over and then use a what was called a waxer, and it would melt wax, and we would roll it on the back of the paper and then stick it on a bigger layout sheet so that we could then cut it where we needed the end of the story. And now with the computers, we press a button, and the columns are all there. Right. 
So technology has changed, and we've tried to stay up with the technology. That's good. So did you, your education background, uh, had you studying religion, and, and what else did you say? Psychology. Psychology. Mm -hmm. yep. So uh, this is kind of a long way from what your education prepared you for. Well, not really. Um, when you go out, um, Maryland did all the news and gathering and the typing and everything. I, I had, had to background. go out. I had to go out and talk to people. I see. I had to sell them ads, right? Okay. Convince them that the newspaper was worthy of buying an ad and putting it in our paper. So the psychology really helped okay. quite a bit to understand people and how they think. Mm -hmm. So that worked out good, and the religion part really helped me from tearing their heads off sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it worked there. Now, your wife did have some background. Uh, she went to school at UB, I think you said. She went to school at UB. And it was for um, for history writing. So she she did a lot of writing. And the, the story where she went to before that at Messiah College is a whole other story entirely. So we'll leave that for, we'll leave that for another date and time right. uh, to tell her story of what goes on there. Very good. So you, you married Marilyn in 1973. Do you have any children? Um, we had three girls. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and how old are they now? They're, they're, they're grown. Okay. No. They're adults now. They're in their 40s. Oh, okay. Right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, each of them has a unique story. All right. And uh, they were, they're, they're, I like to think of them as they're all successful. Okay. One's a, one's a college professor. Uh, right now she's an assistant uh, registrar. The other one's a high school teacher, sciences and uh, biology and physics and things like that. The other one's a, a, an RN. She got her BSRN, um, and she has a story of her own to tell because oh. she had a story of um, different things in her life that you wouldn't think she'd be a an RN now, but uh, that's the way it turned out, wow. and, and things worked out for her in that field. That's great. Um Marilyn and I really met. Um, we were allowed to, her parents allowed us to go out on one date a week. I see. That one date a week happened to be uh, going to band practice. Oh. Uh, when I moved back here in 1965, it was 1965 when I moved from Clarence and I moved back to Akron. Uh, the band director at that time, Frank Columbus, was the director of the community band. And he says, I need to get you into the community band. So in 1965, I joined the community band. So if you add up the years, uh, I've been with that organization consistently for 54 years. Wow, that's impressive. Playing the bugle. And playing the trumpet. Okay. And my wife played flute, okay. and she joined the following year. I see. So it wasn't shortly after that, a couple of years, that the band librarian uh, retired uh, permanently. And they needed a librarian for the band. So for 50 years, I've been the band librarian, Have keeping you? track of all the music and everything. So that's uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of um, directors, conductors come and go. Mm -hmm. um, we had Frank Columbus. There was Ted Stapleton. Uh, there was Jim Gerber, and now our current. Uh, Director is Holly Midas. Wow. And my daughter is assistant director. Oh. Um, she went to school at Wells College. Good school. For arts and performance. And she's the one who works at Genesee Community College now as assistant uh, registrar. 
And What's her last name? Carlin, uh, her last name now is Bacchus. She was uh, uh, adjunct professor out there. Okay. Uh, for a while, and then she applied for this job. I see. To do that. Do you have any grandchildren? Seven. Wow. Okay. I have seven grandchildren. Uh, three, four live in the area, and three live out of the area. All right. Uh, we have a daughter who lives in Erie, Pennsylvania. I see. She's our science teacher. Okay. And, uh, and how how far are you from retirement? I know you're still with the paper. I don't ever plan to retire. Yeah? Yeah. I, I never, I don't plan to retire. Uh, I plan on doing the paper as long as I can. I plan uh -huh. on doing everything else that I'm doing as long as I can. Uh -huh. uh, I don't have a retirement plan where someday I'm going to have a retirement party and uh, just sit around. Yeah. Um, I'm too busy. Good. To retire. <laughs> yeah, that's nice to hear. And I still enjoy playing in the band. And um, now I, I've joined, three years ago, I joined the uh, neighboring community. They have a community band. So that all right. practice is all winter and plays all winter. And this one uh, that we belong to in Akron practices starting in May and plays all summer. All right. So, so you got year round. Keeps now. me busy year round. All right. You're also involved in the Methodist Church and the Rotary and a number well, of other Well, the, the Rotary is difficult right now um, because of my wife's job. And she's um, this year she was ordained a United Methodist pastor. Really? So she has a church in Newfane. Really? And so I've been spending a lot of time in Newfane. Okay. Um, before that, she was in Medina area. So I spent a lot of time out there. So the connection I have now is Thursday morning men's group gets together for breakfast. How nice. And I keep that connection there and uh, spend uh, more time in Newfane okay. now because <laughs> my wife is there. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So we, uh, but I still keep a good connection. I see. Uh, try to locally. So what a wonderful story you have. So I've saved the hardest question for last. You ready? So I'm not sure. Imagine mm. a generation from now, one of your grandchildren is speaking to their children. You and your wife are gone. Mm -hmm. What would you hope they would say about you? Uh, that they love their grandma and grandpa, and they enjoyed visiting with us. And uh, I know they're not going to say this, but uh, they don't have any any need to take over the newspaper. Um, that's too much work. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any so advice that you would give them? No, I don't have any advice to give them at all. Uh, only, oh, well, I, I might. Um, and I tell them now to read a lot, get a good education, stick it out because someday that will come back to help them, whether they hate school or not and they're bored. Um, try not to be bored. Try to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. so. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Ken, for being with us. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for listening in, and remember to tune in to the next episode of Remembering Akron.